We are Robin and Steve. Last time we left off with manta rays. And we'll pick up where we left off. Because we spent three days here with manta rays. Manta rays have the largest brains and brain to body ratio of all fish. The filter feeders, their large mouths draining zooplankton from the sea as they swim. This type of manta ray can reach seven meters across. Manta rays give birth to live pups, one to two pups every one to two years. Newborns can weigh about 70 kilos, with gestation lasting over a year. Their slow reproductive rate exacerbates their vulnerability to threats, which include pollution, harvesting of their gill rakers and gill plates, and entanglement in fishing nets. Manta rays are typically dark on top, brown or black, and often have white underneath. But as you can see, their markings vary greatly. And we met 14 individuals over three days. Manta rays use their visual and olfactory senses to track down prey. They appear to have cognitive maps of their environment, returning repeatedly to cleaning stations and feeding areas. They exhibit behavior associated with self-awareness it was a privilege to be in their presence. These were our last days before making an ocean crossing to Vanuatu. I took this opportunity to blow some bubble rings and to do some aerials, but not simultaneously. some time in remote places, so getting to a city was a bit of a shock. But we had to pick up some Vatu, the money of Vanuatu, here in Nandi, Fiji, where there's also a great market. We'd been low on fresh produce for a while. We did some runs with jerry cans so that our tanks were topped up with diesel. And we treated ourselves to a fancy restaurant breakfast so that it would be well nourished as we headed out to sea. Here's the official paperwork bit. So with that, and with vegetables, we were ready to go. Look at all those vegetables, worthy of an artist's still life study. We hardly ever use a dinghy, time to pack it away for a good long time. It was to be a nice mellow start to our sail, it's about a 470 nautical mile journey and we love that these bits of cloth help us get all that way. Our Fijian courtesy flag looks, shall we say, well loved and we have loved Fiji, so this is appropriate. This flag looks about ready to retire. Fiji waved us goodbye quite literally slowly drifted out past these renowned surf breaks. With the wind behind us, we put up the whisker pole to say a wing and wing. And meanwhile, we caught this seaweed. At dusk, birds appeared. And a few did stop to rest and left impressive mountains of poo. Here's a new orientation of my piece of cloth. Cheap and so comfortable. Look out, another dusk, more birds. We deterred them this time. We'd collected enough guano for one trip. And we'd quite like the instruments on the top of our mast to not get squashed. 
By now, the whisker pole was down and we were on a port tack. chose to reduce sail area because as it was we were going too fast and we didn't want to enter the port in darkness. Things started to get a little bit more rolly. At some stage such a big wave hit us that a heavy drawer was thrown right out of its place. The drawer broke, we bagged the contents and put the drawer on the things to fix list. And we also got hit by waves. Rude. On leaving Fiji, we weren't sure how our tummies would cope with ocean crossing, but we ate very well. Another okonomiyaki, an easy sea meal. We passed the impressive looking Fortuna Island. So we were in Vanuatu waters. We were getting near Vanuatu. And for my last watch from 2am, we hove to in the safety of deep water. As we bobbed around in the darkness, I intermittently saw the glow and at dawn we could see it, Mount Yassa. We were near Port Resolution, so we hoisted the quarantine flag to show that we were coming in from overseas and that we'd need to clear customs. We rocked and rolled all the way into Port Resolution. Enjoying the show that is Mount Yasser, which stands at 361 metres above sea level. Now that it was light enough to see, we were happy to approach Port Resolution and as we left seas kilometres deep, our depth finder found the bottom again. Port Resolution is a gorgeous shelter, if a little bit rolly. Steve packed the sails away as the locals went about their fishing. And as the tide dropped, the earth seemed to exhale more and more steam. I am so going to sit in those hot springs. But first, we had to get our land legs back again and check in to Vanuatu with its massive banyan trees, hot springs and volcanoes. Our trip was already worth it. We'd sailed 475 nautical miles in 94 hours. That's just under four days. And a few of those hours we were hove to, waiting for the sun to come up. Next time, we'll start to check out Vanuatu, including seeing... Molten lava.